I've talked about toe shapes of lasts causing optical illusions before. These Halkett boots by Weiberg in their 2020 last look far too pointy toe to be comfortable, but long-term wear has proved me wrong. How are you going? Welcome to Bootlosophy. My name is Tech. I acknowledge the traditional custodians of the lands that I'm recording on, the Wajit people. This is Weiberg's uh, more formal version of their famous service boot, modelled after Canadian military officer boots. This makeup is in Charles F. Stead's Janus Calf Suede in a green grey colour that, uh, uh, that I think they call flint, and it's in uh, Weiberg's 2020 last. I have already reviewed this boot and you can see it up here. Uh, so in this video, I'm bringing to you an update of what I think after a year of wear. First up, taking a look at this and comparing it to the 2030 last, which is the go-to for their service boots, uh, like this one, you should see that the 2020 last has a much sharper almond-shaped toe. I maintain that even the 2030 last has evolved over time, and I am glad that Dale and his channel, Dale's Leatherworks, also came to the same conclusion recently when he compared a 2015 service boot and a 2024 service boot, both on the 2030 last. In any event, comparing it to uh, this service boot, there is clearly a difference in the toe box between the uh, 2030 and the 2020. The 2030 has an almond toe, but the toe box is nicely rounded and very comfortable to my feet. But when you look at the uh, Halkett boot in this 2020 last, uh, especially from the top and in front, the toe box seems to really slice in from the line of the toe cap without necessarily adding any length to allow more room. In fact, this looks like quite a short boot. My first impression taking it out of the box was that, ooh, this might prove painful. <laughs> uh, but more of this last later. People new to boots might be a bit confused about this talk of Weiberg's lasts, so let me explore that a little bit. First of all, Weiberg is a Canadian company founded in 1931 with a long history of making work and Canadian military boots. In 2008, Brett Weiberg uh, brought back the service boot pattern, made it more modern, and it's probably the root of all of today's military service boot inspired designs by people like Grant Stone, uh, Parker, certainly Thursday Captains, even Alan Edmonds and the Higgins Mill. Uh, through its long history, Weiberg has developed a lot of lasts, which are the boot shaped molds like this one. Weiberg used about 13 different lasts. I will leave a link to their page about their lasts in the description area below, and I do recommend that you read it to understand how they each fit. It is interesting reading. They describe the 2030 last as being a symmetrical elongated toe that resembles an almond both in profile and aerial views. In contrast, the 2020 last is described as being an anatomical toe that allows the natural foot uh, allowing it for a flat inside and curved outside that creates a unique orthopedic toe shape. Now let me just say, that totally confuses me because at some angles, yeah, I see a straighter line up the big toe, but in most angles, I see a more pointy almond toe. In researching this video, I did a, a double take and I went to check the shoe box that this pair came in, uh, checking the label, uh, just checking and confirming that this actually is on a 2020 last. <laughs> By the way, Vibook makes up its models using different lasts, and the Halkett boots that you see on their website at the time of recording this are in their 6478 and in their 2030 lasts, which is why I doubt it myself. Anyway, confirmed. 2020 last and confirmed. Despite the optical illusion, anatomically comfortable. Sorry to take so much time looking at the last, but I find that with Vyberg, uh, it can be very confusing, and you might have been frightened off by the shape of this last. Now, I have had this pair for just under a year, so I think it's probably due an update. I know that when I reviewed this pair after I had it a few months, I really liked it, aesthetically and quality-wise, and certainly for comfort. I remember I was impressed by the suede. I did make a couple of mistakes though, so I'll, I'll go through them now. And uh, If you do go and watch that review, uh, look out for when I said, I wasn't sure this was a Goodyear welted construction. It is. 
I also said that um, I thought it might be an E width, meaning US E or wide width. It's not. It's an average USD width. Viberg, being a Canadian company, uses the UK sizing format, being one whole number down from US sizing numbers. Now, since I measure a US 8.5, taking true to size, I would size these in UK 7.5, which is what Viberg calls this size. This leads to confusion in US Reddit threads when people talk about, oh, you must take a whole size down, which you don't. You must take a whole number down. It's just that UK sizes are one number down from US size numbers. In the same way, giving a letter to a width is totally arbitrary. Now in the US, it is good, it's quite standardized where D is average, E is wide and so on. But elsewhere in the world, Viberg calls this an E, for example, in their system, which is their average width. Go take a look at UK Boots websites and you see references to G, F, E, all being that brand's letter for average width. Yeah, it is confusing. We need a worldwide convention to decide sizing formulas. Anyway, after a year's wear, here is what I think. Note that I haven't worn this much at all. Now, firstly, I only wear this in totally urban conditions and as a neat, casual boot. Uh, so going to the office, for example, going to dinner with friends, that sort of thing. I don't think it's even met a raindrop. <laughs> Under these conditions, I estimate, I really wish I kept logs, but anyway, I think I've worn it over maybe a couple of hundred plus kilometers or about 150 miles max. For most people, that's probably light wear over a year, but it, it has taken on some wear characteristics that I can talk about. The suede has worn really well. It has a very soft nap. Now most suedes, even those from Charles F. Stead, will show some flattening of the nap or even some rubbing off of the nap uh, in that mileage. In this case, it's maintained an even surface, uh, bar a scrape or two here, I think. Um, uh, whether it's the color or the type of Janus calf suede, it has the texture and look of velvet, and it hasn't been damaged at all. With most suede, yeah, sure, you can, you can brush it the right way and the wrong way, and it takes on shades of light. I find this uh, Janus calf suede gives you a really soft play of shades, even all on the one plane of the boot even changing color in, in that plane, not just the shade. Creasing is totally minimal, and the rolls developing around the ankles uh, and the vamp make it look softened rather than creased. I find the larger quarters making for closer lace facings uh, make lacing up very supportive around the ankle and the instep. They haven't stretched like some of my uh, other boots with large quarters where you develop a fear that the lace facings will actually eventually meet. The blind eyelets, have not worn or opened up at all. The ungusseted tongue, something I usually hate, has not slipped at all. So the uppers in summary have worn really well. In terms of comfort, the day-night outsole seems to be made of a softer compound than on some of my other boots. Take the White's MP, for example. The day-night compound on those are uh, firm, sturdy, but if you ran or even walked faster, could really shake your teeth out. I don't know what components they use exactly in the insole, but it does feel like leather and cork, thinner than on their service boot, and I think the midsole is also thinner than uh, on the service boot itself. But whatever they use, the combination of materials and thickness make this, uh, made this a lot easier to break in, and I find the whole sole construction flexible and shock absorbing. Apart from looking good, the suede uppers are soft and very comfortable around the foot. Uh, as for QC, after over 100 miles, nothing has come a cropper. The sole layers haven't shown any signs of separating. The stacked heels have all stayed together. The stitching on the uppers have all stayed secure and no threads have come loose. The hardware is firm, backed, and as I said earlier, the blind eyelets have not shown any wear or fraying on the, on the outside. The toe puff and heel counters, which I've since confirmed are leather, <clears throat> are very comfortable. They don't cut into my toes or the Achilles tendon, uh, and they've kept their shape. In the department of patina, suede can go two ways. Some people will wear their suede boots like rough-out boots, scraping and scuffing them up so that they show variations uh, in even the length of nap and maybe even grease stains that flatten them on some wear areas. 
Others will wear them like dress shoes, and that's the way I've worn these. So the patina developing has developed accordingly. I call it elegantly. Apart from a few like tiny scuffs uh, and the rolls developing, they look almost new. I brush these quite regularly. Uh, the suede does feel uh, more worn in, of course, and again, uh, that's why I describe the patina as elegant, uh, like the velvet curtains in an old lady's Victorian parlor. <laughs> I bought these from the Up There store in Melbourne on sale uh, for Australian $639. Before the sale, they were listed at Aussie $1,420. So trust me, I couldn't pass that by. Aussie $639 bucks converts to about $400 US dollars and Halkets are currently listed on the Viberg website at around US $900, uh, although in very unique new leathers, not instead suede. Viberg may very well be pricing itself beyond most people's spending power, but I have to say, if this was my one boot that I wore every day to the office, or at least every couple of days, I think I could justify that price because I'd be wearing it for decades and probably passing it on to children. At any rate, uh, at 600 Aussie, I'm very pleased with the value. And that, in summary, is my overall feeling. Uh, after a year, I'm very happy with the value because of what it represents in comfort and looks uh, in design and looks in the soft, elegant patina that's developing. It is a, a boot I wish I did wear more often, but you know, boot reviewer. <laughs> when I start selling off some of my collection, I will be hanging on to these. Anyway, there you are. Uh, I hope you like this update. Let me know if you want me to bring you another one. Uh, maybe in another year's time. If you like this video, uh, uh, if you're still watching, <laughs> please click on like and subscribe down there. Take care. Until the next time, look after yourself and see you soon.